Good evening, everyone. Good morning to some and uh, middle of the night for others. So it's good to be back and to be talking with you. I didn't have an Easter service uh, just because so many were having Easter services that I thought, you know, everybody's traveling around everywhere. And, and uh, so I just thought I'd move mine to Tuesday. And I'll probably be doing most of the most of my meetings on Tuesday evenings, 6, 6.30 p.m. right in there um, because it uh, makes it easier on people here that are, uh, that are coming. Um, you know, some of them work and, and different things. So I will be, I will be uh, doing most of the time Tuesday evenings. And if I decide, decide to do any more than that, I will let you know. And um, waiting just a couple of minutes to let everybody on. And uh, then I will get started. We, uh, the last time we were together, we talked about unity. And I, uh, I've been looking a lot at unity and realizing that understanding brings oneness, um, but love brings unity. And we can all have our understanding and, uh, be completely different and sometimes uh, be quarreling over what we see in our doctrines and our opinions and everything else and um, but love brings unity you can pull over top of all that and love one another and uh, be in unity one with another and not necessarily be in oneness the same understanding as one another I remember Paul in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, he starts out, he says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Um, and he said, uh, going on into perfection. So uh, it was good to know the principles. It, it, it was good to know the doctrines, but that's not what perfects you. What perfects you is going on. And Paul said it was love that perfects us. And, um, uh, I think there's one more step after love, um, and that's unity. We can love one another and um, have a completely different understanding, but still have unity with one another and be brothers and sisters and things. And so I'm looking at some of that. I, I thought about a, looking at a at a message that I'm thinking on that says transcending uh, love divine. You know, you say, well, how, how can you go any further than love? Well, if you've read uh, the prophet's message, you know what he said. He said, uh, he said, love is not necessarily evidence. He said, because, uh, he said, the Pharisees, he said, they loved one another. He said, they, they baptized the babies. They buried the, uh, the people. They, and he said, they visited their homes and prayed for the sick and, done all sorts of things, but, uh, but it wasn't the love that would bring unity because they constantly fought with one another. So we can go beyond that concept of love and go into unity where that, uh, our understanding brings us to oneness. If, if me and, and, uh, and brother Joe Gomez understand the same thing, we can come to a real oneness and enjoy one another. But if I've got a person that that I don't understand the same as him, that shouldn't make me disfellowship him. It shouldn't make me unlove him. It, uh, we should still be able to hold together in unity, one with another. So that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm working on. But tonight I wanted to talk just for a few minutes this evening on uh, movement of the spirit in resurrection, movement of the spirit. In resurrection so we know that in order to uh, have a resurrection something has to be planted something has to not only that but if you read birth pains we're told that it isn't only planted and buried it has to rot and die to bring forth new life and of course science proves that you can nature proves that take your seeds and go out here and Put them in the ground and and uh, that seed is going to rot 
It's going to die. It's going to do all those things. Um, and then it's going to have something on the inside of it that pulls out and comes back to life. And so talking about the movement of the spirit in resurrection, well, the, the spirit is moving toward resurrection long before it brings resurrection. Um, planting a natural seed. There are a few things that you need to do. You, if you plant a natural seed, corn or wheat or whatever, into the ground, um, green beans, potatoes, whatever it might be, number one, you need to have good ground. And uh, the second thing is you need to have water. And the third thing is you need to have sunshine. And if you don't have those three things, if the ground's bad, you can have water and sunshine, you're still not going to get much out of it. If the ground is good and you don't have water, you're not going to get anything out of it. And if you have the ground and water, but you have no sunshine, the sun is what pulls everything up in the resurrection. It brings it up. So you have this planting of the natural seed, and it shows three things that you need to have. And then on top of that, of course, you know, you need to go out, you need to nourish it, you need to take care of it, you need to fertilize it. If you want the best growth out of it, now you'll get some growth um, without doing any of those things. Once you get ground, water, and sunshine, and the seeds in there, it'll come out. But if you want the very best growth, you have to nourish that. Now, a seed has within it, it is, it has within it a, a, I don't know what else to call it other than a male female attribute. The seed reproduces itself. Um, it's, it's like some of the animals. I, I'm not sure of all of them, but I know, uh, I know that worms, for instance, um, worms have both the fertility, the male and the female, um, in them and they fertilize or they, they use the fertility on their own self and it creates more and more and more all the time. So someone said, well, there's no such thing as a male, female in, in, uh, in one body. Well, you can step into the spiritual and you will find that. Now, when, uh, when we came into this world, we came in by free moral agency. That's what we came for. We were predestinated to the earth for free moral agency. We, we elected a body in the earth. And once we were predestinated and elected, then free moral agency for the next, from your natural birth until your natural death in this realm, you have free moral agency to make any choice you want to make about anything. Now, the issue is, remember what I said, you came here with good ground. You, you, uh, you came here as a little baby out of the womb of the mother in good ground. And you came through water and you came through blood and you began to have uh, nourishment from mom and dad and from brother and sister. And you were taken care of by, by aunts and uncles and moms and dads and teachers and tutors and everything else that in your life as you grew up and you were being nourished and taken care of and fertilized in that good ground that you came to. And so we see that and we know that that's what is needed in order to bring forth new life. Now, there's a spirit in the world right now, and I know where it's coming from. You know, we came to the understanding that we hold spiritual within us. Paul said, there is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, and there's all that stuff. We've transcended all of it, and we've moved into a point to where we are all things. And when we recognize that we are all things, um, then we know that we have both the seed, the fertility, and we have the, quote, womb within us to bring forth spiritual birth. If you don't know what your, your womb is, your womb spiritually is your heart. And if you don't know where the seed comes from, your mind is the fertility or the, the feeder 
or the male, so to speak, and it's producing thousands upon thousands of seeds. When that male ejects his uh, seed into a woman, there's millions and millions of those cells going into that woman. Now, one is all it takes, but there's millions of them. And it's the same way with your mind. In a day, I believe science says in, a, in an average day, a person thinks about 80,000 thoughts. Now, that's, that is putting seed out. And where's it going? It's going into your heart. Now, when it goes into the heart, that woman can receive or reject that part of you, that, that heart. Once the mind drops something within your heart, you don't have to do it. You don't have to, you don't have to play with it. You don't have to produce it. You can just let it go. Just let it go. Or you can say, that's a seed I want. And it begins to bring forth in your life, whatever that might be. So you have this going on in you. The mind is the fertility and the heart is the womb and it is fertilizing the womb all the time. And the womb is making decisions. Your heart is making decisions. Jesus said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. <coughs> so you're making those decisions all the time. As a man thinketh, there's your mind producing seed in his heart. There it goes to the woman into the womb. So is he. Then you did make a decision whether you want to produce that or not. So that's the planting of the spiritual seed within the heart of men and women. The woman has the same thing. Her mind is the fertility, the male. Her heart is the female, the womb, that receives those thoughts and makes a decision whether it's a good or a bad. Every woman has it, every man has it. All of us have it within us. <coughs> but there's another spirit in the world that wants to mimic it, wants to look like it. It wants to produce the same things. And what it is, is we have, we have come into um, free moral agency, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when we came into that tree, um, that tree can produce whatever you want to produce. <coughs> that tree can produce godly things. That very same tree that I'm living in can produce ungodly things. It can produce beautiful things. It can produce ugly things. It can do whatever this tree can do it. And what's happening is this tree is a creator. That's what the Lord said in Genesis, the first chapter. He said, man has now become as us, <coughs> knowing both good and evil. So man had become just like God, and man became a creator. Now, of course, the spirit, the great spirit that was doing all that is much greater, much larger than me or you or any of us individually. But we are someone who can create. We're, we came into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we create all the time. Well, what's happening is people that don't have a revelation or don't have the understanding they should have. And they're living in the tree of knowledge. They create spirits. And there's a spirit out there that's trying to make the females males. And it's trying to make the males females. And you can just see it all across the nation. You can see it all across the world. And they're trying to, to uh, do away with, quote, the gender of male and female and start using pronouns of he, she, he uh, him, and she, they, and everything else. And they're not even calling themselves a male or a female. And it's, uh, it's, it is a mimic of the very spirit of the Holy Spirit and we create it in our bodies. We create it in our mind. We take on a mind and a thought that says we'd like to be female. If I'm a male, it says I'd like to be female. And instead of knowing the word and the scripture and knowing that I already have that in me and that I need to fertilize that and use that to become the spiritual person that I'm supposed to do, supposed to be, we turn around and we try to naturally 
back in the Roman days, back in the Greek days, I forget the goddess. It was a, it was a woman goddess and she wanted to change herself into a man. And that woman goddess, Rome and Greece and all of them, they worship that. And there's even pictures, if you go out and you look, you can find pictures of where the man's dancing with a knife in his hand, where he's, he's cut off his, his privates, his package and everything else, and, and he's trying to be a woman. These are evil spirits that came off of people throughout the ages and off of people that are alive today. And they're trying to get into the spirit that the Holy Spirit wants them to be into. And they have no understanding, no revelation. They have no teaching. They don't have a, a mother and a father that teaches them the right way. They, they, they go into school and they watch drag queens and they see all of this stuff going on. What they're doing is they're building evil spirits right within the people, right from a child up. It's evil spirits being built into the people. And then when they get uh, at an age where they're adults and they have a foundation, one or two things happen. And that is they move further into the evil and begin to produce and manifest it out there. Or they move further into condemnation and feel like, what in the world did I do to myself? And now here I am and they just have a horrible feeling about them. Well, that's free moral agency. You want to go there? I guarantee you, you start entertaining that spirit, you'll go there. And you'll begin to build that spirit within you. You want to be godly? Build that spirit within you. You want to be ungodly? Build that spirit within you. You'll go there. The Holy Spirit, like I was telling one of the brothers over the weekend, the Holy Spirit is neutral. And and everyone thinks that... that you know, the Holy Spirit wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't feed something like that, but it is neutral. And Brother Branham told us in uh, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. He said, it all depends on how you approach the Holy Spirit. It all depends on how you approach the Holy Spirit. If I approach him wanting something bad, he said, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open." Jesus didn't say just seek for good things and you'll get them or just seek for, for wonderful things. He said, you seek, you're going to get it. And people do it and they seek and the Holy Spirit feeds that and it takes them into a low frequency and a low vibration. Or you can want the godly things. You can want the good things. You can want those things and, and let the Holy Spirit feed that to you and it'll take you up into the higher frequencies. The whole universe is set up on waves going up and down, up and down. And we do that. We go through periods in our life, up and down. We go through times in our life when we feel condemned and feel like we could do better. We go through times in our life when we feel like, man, if I could feel like this my whole life, I'd be, I'd be so happy. So we do that through free moral agency. And these evil spirits, these, this tree is producing those spirits on a regular basis. It's not, they're not floating out here in the air. They're coming from the mind of a man or a woman. And they're, they're wanting that. And that seed goes into the womb and they begin to produce that over a period of time. It begins to produce and it begins to show up and that woman, if she's wanting to be a man, what she do? She starts dressing like a man. She starts walking like a man. She starts getting jobs like a man. She, she starts talking like a man and, and on and on and on. And it just keeps going. And she has a sex change. And all of that's just spirits created off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A man, he gets it in his mind. I want to be a, I want to be a woman. I, I've never been comfortable being a man. And he has these... He has everything taken off of him and he has himself changed in a sex change. And I've, I have talked with people who have done it and they are the most condemned people in the world. And I try to tell them, you've already done it now. You can't help what you've done. Serve the Lord. Just have better sense than to ever do it again. Have better sense than to ever teach anybody to do it. Bring your children up differently if you have children. Let everybody know how you feel. And that if they go that way, this is the feelings you're going to have. So those things are coming off of our tree. And they're producing themselves all around us. Planting of the seed. 
coming out of the mind, seed by the millions, thinking all the time, all kinds of decisions, all kinds of thoughts flowing into the womb of the heart. And then you, as, as the female attribute, you decide whether you want to be a godly woman or a prostitute. You make that decision. And it comes in your life as you make the decision. Now, so that the Holy Spirit itself, when we plant the seed, as I said, you need to have good ground, water, and sunshine. And then when it begins to come up, it comes up in a process. It comes up in a process, and you know the process that we've used so many times. It comes out in two blades out of the ground, and then it comes into a stalk, and then it comes into a tassel, and then it moves on into the husk, and then it moves out into the grain. All of that is processes. Works as faith expressed. It was told us by the prophet. He said, I have a certain part of me that's going to perish. We're talking about the movement of the spirit. You see how all the way back at the beginning of that planting of the seed, there has to be a rotting and a dying. And then what happens is it begins to move through a process. And it moves through uh, spiritually. That spiritual seed moves through justification, sanctification, uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost, full word, and right on out. And the natural seed moves through, like I said, those four stages. So the natural types the spiritual. Now in the spiritual, you have to have you have to have three things in the natural, and then you need somebody to nourish you, to take care of you, and to help you along. We depend on one another. It brings forth good seed. Spiritual seed, on, on the other hand, there's three things that need to be. Spoken word, which is the earth. They spoke the word and brought the earth upon them. They spoke the word and brought forth animals. Adam spoke the word. They brought all these things forth. The spoken word, that's your earth. It brings it forth. The second thing is you need is water, which is blood. And the third thing that you need is Spirit, which is sun. So you have earth, blood, and spirit. Or you have spoken word, water, earth, blood, and sun, or spoken word, water, and spirit. And then when that happens, listen to me, you need nourishment by, by, by the moon at nighttime. Did you know that? Most of the plants, most everything gets its nourishment from the earth during the nighttime when all the trees and when all the botany life is, is producing hydrogen and oxygen and bringing it out. And then what do we do? During the day, humanity wakes up and it's going across the earth and it's putting out carbon dioxide, which the trees take in and they reproduce that carbon dioxide and put it back out during the night, and it is oxygen and hydrogen and all the things that we need to live. So the trees live off of us, and we live off of them. So it's, it's, it's that way we nourish one another. And when we understand that we are to nourish one another and take care of one another, we can come through this spiritual seed, and we can come through this natural life and this natural seed very easy. Not not easy, I would say, very mature and, and full of quality and full of godliness. We can come through it. Corinthians, the 15th chapter, Paul made a statement. He said, he was talking about the seed. He said, the Lord plants a seed and said, he brings that seed out as it pleaseth him. And Paul said that which is natural is first. Or Paul makes another statement, just a couple of scriptures later, that, that which is seed that was planted is bare seed. Or in other words, it hasn't produced anything. So we have this going on in our life where the, the natural seed, what was the natural seed that was planted into the earth? I will ask you that question. What was the natural seed that was planted into the earth? Theophany. 
It was you. You were the seed come out of Christ. And you were theophany, but it had no, it had no uh, experience at all. The knowledge laid there, but no experience. And that natural seed that got planted into the earth was your theophany. And at the right day and at the right time, at the predestinated time and the elected time, you know what happened? Dad produced some fertility. Mother had it in her womb. And here you come, nine months coming out of the womb, water, blood, and spirit. You walked out into the earth and you began to produce. And when that happens, see, we have, we have this thought in our mind like, like we haven't been enlightened. We have been. Paul said you were a barren seed and you were a seed that was natural. The theophany was the natural seed. And then Paul comes on over and he says, that which is natural is first. That was the theophany. And he said, that which is spiritual is second. Well, how do we get to that spiritual? We come into this life. We're born from the womb. We stand up in the earth. We put our earth on and we begin to walk in resurrection, potential. And as we walk in that potential resurrection, we begin to build our body. We build our body. We build ourselves to be a good man or a good woman. We build ourselves with principles. We build ourselves with beliefs. We build ourselves with godly systems. We build ourselves with so many things. Our parents help us. Our moms help us. Dads help us. Teachers help us. Everything else. And we build a body or a person that's coming through. And what is that? That, that space of time where that you are under tutors and governors you haven't yet received the power to be who you are. The power is in you. It is there. Let me put it like this. Um, this um, last uh, election, Donald Trump was the president. And Joe Biden got elected. Okay? Now, or they say he did. I don't think he did. But anyway, Joe Biden got elected. Now... He didn't have any power, even though he was, he was the president of the United States, he had no power until January 21st of that next year. He was elected in November. That's exactly the way you were until you woke up. You, you are already the president. You are already a child of God. Paul said, because you are sons, he has sent the spirit of his son crying, Abba, Father, he he, he already had something in you that you were a son, but you weren't carrying the power that a son of God is to carry. You were in that uh, potential area, elected, but not yet took the office of being a son of God who understands who he is that, that the spirit can hand the business to and say, go, man, go at it. Go out there and do everything you want to do. So that's, that's kind of where you're at when you are a bare seed, theophany. You're placed into the earth and you begin to walk around in the earth. You're in a space, a space of carnality, which is a carnal mind. So you come from theophany. It's, it's all one mind. Theophany mind. Theophany is an attribute. Carnal mind is an attribute. You're learning the earth. You're taking on all the carnal things. You're eating carnally. You're living carnally. You're, you're getting all your experiences carnally. And then one day, you kind of wake up to the fact that, hey, you know, I don't necessarily need these tutors and governors anymore. I, I, don't, I don't need mom and dad to nourish me anymore. I don't need any of these things. I'm a grown woman. I'm a grown man. What's happening? You are coming to the understanding of what's been happen happening to you all the way through your carnal stages. And you move from the theophany into carnality. And then as you recognize who you are and you recognize your day and your message, where do you move to? You move to a spiritual person. Paul said that, which is first is natural, bare seed. That which is second is when the theophany gets into that carnality, moves into that, uh, gets into the carnality, and those two attributes create a spiritual man. And you're walking around in earth with all you have in the theophany and all you have in the human body, 
and and he's built you into a a a beautiful person and that's how the natural is first and the spiritual is second that is the move by the energy of the holy spirit now a lot of people have have trouble with me calling the holy spirit energy and and saying the Holy Spirit has high frequencies and low frequencies, and the Holy Spirit is vibration. I even have made the statement: the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is the internet. I, I got calls or uh, writings from people saying, "What in the world are you talking about? The internet's neutral." Brother Branham said, "We're all in the ether. Go read it." He said, "We're all in the ether." Message: Who do you say this is? He said, we're all in the ether. The millennium's out there in the ether. Everything is out there in the ether. He said, Jesus is in the ether. We're in the ether. We're all out in there together. The ether is the internet. It's neutral. You know what you can do? You can go out there and you can find some of the most blessed things and the most godly things. And you can sit and listen to it all day and you can shout and you can learn so much and it can feed you and do things for you. Or you can go out there and you can watch murdering, you can watch porno, you can watch pedophilia, you can watch all those things and just keep going lower and lower and lower and lower because the Holy Spirit will feed you based on how you approach him. That's the difference in this day. We have an understanding. Now, Brother Branham was talking in demonology. And he said, I have found something that my poor Irish heart is just so thrilled about. I don't know what to do. I, I know something of the Lord now that I didn't know a week ago. See, I know that he has a channel that he moves through, a frequency. Ye are the branches. We're the one that bears the fruit. So he's the channel, he's the energy, and he moves himself through those channels and puts himself in you to bear the fruit. He goes on. We're, we're the ones that bears the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He's the vine that furnishes the energy. So don't get upset at me anymore when I talk about energy. Brother Branham said, the Holy Spirit is the vine that feeds you the energy. It is the energy. But the branches bear the fruit. See, that's you. Is that right? In my name shall you cast out devils. Nothing shall harm you by no means. You shall walk on scorpions and serpents. Is that right? Then we're wrapped in the bundle of the life of God. Every believer, every person. It's just like when you receive the Holy Spirit. God gives you a bank book. And at the bottom of every check, it's got Jesus' name signed on it. When do you, quote, receive the Holy Spirit? You say, oh, that's when I'm born again. I, I can agree with that. But I believe that you receive the Holy Spirit from your mother's womb. That spirit that came into you. Brother Branham said, every single one of us have an angel, a spirit that comes into us. And that is the angel of the Holy Spirit. We all have it. But all of us have different times and places where that we wake up to that. And that's why he's talking about when you receive the Holy Spirit or when you realize that you have the Holy Spirit and it's moving in you and that's who you are, then you get a bank book that's a blank check with Jesus' name written on the bottom. And the bottom, every check has Jesus' name. And anything you got need of, just fill out the check and send it in. See, that's good. Don't you believe that? Why? The deposit was put in the bank at Calvary. Jesus put an endless deposit in the bank for you. Then when you come here, you come through that carnality stage where you have tutors and governors and you're not quite fit yet to run the business. Uh, you're not quite fit to step into the office of the Father and you're led along by the Holy Spirit. Listen, when I was sitting on a bar drinking, I was led by the Holy Spirit. When I was cursing and lying and everything else, I was led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying the Holy Spirit led me to do those things, but he was in me leading me and he brought me through all of those things, through every nasty thing that I came through, through every lie I came through, everything. The Holy Spirit was right there. It was me. It was that spirit that he put in me to start with. 
and I made it through my carnality and came to an open understanding of who I am, and it changed me. I believe I listened to Brother Benjamin Norad over the weekend, and he said, he read it out of It Is the Rising of the Sun, where Brother Branham said, uh, you don't know if you're born again? He said, your body changed, didn't it? And he said, your thoughts changed, didn't it? And you don't know that you're born again? I mean, when we recognize these things, now let's go on here. He says, the deposit was put in the bank at Calvary. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. Any of those redemptive blessings, any of those redemptive blessings that we've been given, that belongs to every one of us. If we're scared to fill the check out, what in the world's wrong with you? It'll never do you any good. Like I said, you can have a million dollars in your pocket if you don't know it's there. Or if you're afraid to run out, it'll never do you any good. And here he says, now look, any of those redemptive blessings are yours. Don't be afraid to fill the check out. If you fill it out and then tear it off and put it in your pocket, it'll never do you no good. See, what you've got to do is tear it off, commit it to him, to the bank, and watch what takes care of. Watch what you receive. God will take care of you and you will receive what you need. See, we, we get to understanding that we got these things in us, but this ain't necessarily the age for it. I remember one place uh, he was preaching and he said, uh, he said, when Jesus purchased my house, he said, he gave it to me and it's my house. And he said, it's already been purchased by the blood. And it's a brand new home. And he said, when I step in it, he said, how would you feel if somebody started telling you to don't go in that room? Don't go in that room. Uh, stay right here. You can't go in any other room. Don't get in that cupboard. He said, you'd feel like, come on, man. I'm, I, this house has been bought. He said, don't be telling me I can't look in the cupboard. He said, don't give me an old cold tater and tell me to wait on the millennium. Tell me to wait on the healing, to wait on this and that. He said, don't give that to me. See, and that's where we're at. We're in an age when we're the all in all. We, we, we don't have to do those things. We just move in the action of the Holy Spirit right to check out. Brother Ben, I prayed for him over the weekend. Different ones were standing there and prayed with me. Brother Larry and some of them. And I felt earnestly and honestly that he asked sincerely from behind that pulpit some things he needed. I prayed for him and I believe with all my heart. I wrote the check out and I sent it in. And I believe with all my heart the next time I see Brother Ben, he's going to be different when it comes to physical and when it comes to health. I believe that with all my heart. I said, Lord, move his body right now in the right direction. And I believe it'll happen. And I believe there's many of you sitting out there that have had that happen to you. You've wrote me. You've asked me to pray for you. Some of you have had sicknesses. Some of you have had tumors. Some of you have had all those different kinds of things. You've had, you've had COVID. You've, had, you've been dying of cancer and pray and the Holy Spirit move. Even though we're sitting 8,000 miles away, the Holy Spirit move and touch you and you are healed. Why? Because I am not afraid to fill out a check. I'm not afraid to send it in. You need to become the same way. Don't be afraid. It's yours. It's completely purchased for you. It's part of the resurrection. Did you know that healing is the potential? It is the evidence of the resurrection. If there wasn't any healing in the earth, I'd be worried there wasn't any resurrection. I mean, if he can't heal a liver or if he can't heal a lung... How in the world is he going to heal an entire body? So we see this going on now. I want to, I want to go to a, a, a different uh, message here. And I'm, I'm reading these, trying to build your faith into the resurrection. Because we're in the resurrection right now. I'm not waiting on bodies to get up out of the graveyard up here a couple of blocks away. I go by there every day. And I look out there and I look at empty rooms. There ain't nobody in those graves. It's just single rooms and nobody's in them. And nobody's going to get up out of them. We got up in Jesus Christ. 
Jesus, there, there only had to be one body raised. And it redeemed the entire earth. Jesus Christ raised from the dead. And you've heard your prophet and you've read the Bible and everything else that told you when he raised from the dead, you raised from the dead. That, that piece of earth in the future home, Brother Branham said, redeemed all the rest of the earth. So my body is already redeemed. It's already resurrected. It's already living in that. Sure, you look at it and you say, well, it's growing old. It's the realm I'm in. That's all it is. And if I have to shed this realm, I'll shed it one day and you will too. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the resurrection has already happened. Now he says, now if you got theology, if you got some doctrine, if you got some superstition, if you got some unbelief, you got something that stops up somewhere. You got something that stops up your pipelines. See, then that energy can't never pull through you. You got it all stopped up with theology and doctrines and superstitions and unbelief. It's what he's saying. He said, you got yourself all stopped up. Remember in the in Feast of the Trumpets, he said that the Holy Spirit was bound for 2,000 years by doctrines and the things of men, man-made things. Well, that's what you do to yourself. You bind yourself up. You think, well, if everybody don't believe my doctrine, I can't fellowship with them. If, if, if these people, if they, if, they, uh, if they got superstitions, I can't fellowship with them. Uh, it, I, I, why, if they got theology, they ain't born again. We got, we got all these thoughts in us, and we separate ourselves. And this is not a day of separation. This is a day of uniting. This is a day to go beyond love and step into a uniting. Love, understanding will bring you to oneness. Love will bring you to unity. We need to take a step further into unity. And when we do that, we'll realize that everything, it don't matter what it is, it is running off the same engine you're running off of. It's running off the Holy Spirit. Now he says, look, you got something stopped up somewhere. That energy can never pull through you. But when you get, got to a place where you're perfectly wired up, the master electrician has okayed it by the sealing of the Holy Spirit. Then the only thing is just turn it on and watch it run. Watch the energy of the Holy Spirit take action. There will be a light show like you have never seen before. I like that. Yet there will be a light show. Everything will light up to you. Everything will come to you. And ye are the light of the world. He goes on. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Uh, hid. We're wired up right. We're, we're in the proper age. We know that. We're in the Aquarian age. We're in the proper message. We know that. Love divine. And on into unity. We're in all of these things. We had the opening of the seals. We have the Holy Spirit back in the earth. And, and Zechariah, the fourth chapter, said when he come back, he's going to bring his saints with him. Somebody said, well, okay, if Jesus is here, where's the saints? Well, where do you think they're at? They're right here. They're living with us. They're walking with us. It's an it's a eyelid away. It's a shade away is all it is. And they're right here walking in the same earth. They came to the earth with Jesus Christ when he returned to the earth. So this master electrician has okayed it by sealing you with the Holy Ghost. And then turn on the switch and watch the light show. And ye are the light of the world, a city that cannot be hid. And we tonight ought to be ashamed of ourselves, honestly and humbly, confess our unbelief before God and ask him to forgive us of anything that we would represent outside of this life and that we need to depend on this life and light. That's where we're at. The life and the light has come. That's what the seal's done. He said we were bound for 2,000 years. We're the Holy Spirit. People are the Holy Spirit. And we were bound for 2,000 years. But he said, in the last days of Malachi 4, Revelation 10, there's to come a prophet that'll loose the Holy Spirit. Who is he loosing? He loosed us, you and me. We're the Holy Spirit. He loosed us and set us free from all those doctrines and all that theology 
and all of this man-made stuff, he put us in the resurrection. And now he says, now the Old Testament people did not have this presence. Now I know we look back and say, boy, I wish I was like Elijah. I wish I was like this one. I wish they did not have this presence. My goodness, we've got something. Listen to him. Are you unaware of that? Do you not understand what I'm saying? This is him talking. You refer back sometimes to Elijah or Moses or those people, Moses and, and Jeremiah and some of those people that were great men ordained of God and you refer back and you say, oh my, uh, I, I wish that I was like them. But yet you have the privilege way beyond what they have. They didn't have the privilege that you have. They did not have the power the operation of the Holy Ghost given to them to perform the things that you can perform every day. I believe this with all my heart. We need to build our faith to that. Remember, planting a seed, good ground. I've never condoned going out here and going on and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And anybody that listened to me closely knows that. Good ground. The ground is your earth. Live in it. Live in it holy. Live in it. Be as pure as you can be in it. When it makes you make a mistake, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. A day without rain doesn't mean a thing. It will continue to grow. You step back in your place. It's like I've often said, when you're shooting an arrow, you step up on the platform, you shoot the arrow, and if it doesn't strike the bullseye, that's a sin. You say, oh, what do you mean? Well, I don't know whether you know it or not, but the word sin did not come from the Bible. The word sin came from archery. When a man who is shooting an arrow misses his target, he sinned. Now, you know how they get out of, out of their sin? They get back up. They take another arrow out. They step right back up on the foundation. They get up there to the line and they shoot another arrow and they strike the target. And they get out of their sin. You do the same thing. You, We had sin. We missed the mark. We missed what the calling was. We missed who we were. We came under tutors and governors. We've done all those things. But now you've got a foundation. And you've got a quiver of arrows. And you can step up on there onto that foundation of Jesus Christ. You can shoot your arrow. And if it misses that bullseye, don't worry about it. Pull the next arrow out and shoot it. You're good. You know how to do it. You'll strike the bullseye. But we get all scared because of sin. Well, sin is just missing the mark. You get back up. You pull your bootstraps up. And you go up and you shoot again. For they foresaw the day. He's talking about these Old Testament saints. They foresaw the day. What day? That the Holy Spirit would be embraced and looked for it to come before it ever come. And now we're living right in it. What they wanted to embrace, we seem to be afraid of it. See, what a privilege we have that we can embrace the Holy Spirit. It's in us. Embrace it. Take it. Now, if Satan's body can be operated by unbelief or I, you know what I say, Satan, is his processes. If those processes can be operated without the operation of the Holy Spirit, which is unbelief, they continue to grow. And Brother Brandon said, they're not the life. They will perish. And doubts and fears will produce what the Scripture says it will. It'll produce sickness. It'll produce disaster. It'll produce weakness. It'll produce all kinds of things when you... Step into that body of Satan without the operation of the Holy Spirit. And then people, by unbelieving, produce that. Shouldn't people believing with the power of God harness these things and bring them back to correction? That's all I'm telling you. There was a time we couldn't produce it. There was a time we wanted to produce it. We didn't know how to produce it. We've had prophets. We've had great men. We've come into oneness. We know who God is. We know, we know what the devil is. We know the processes. We know all of these things about us. We know that there's only one entity that's leading us and guiding us. 
And it is the Holy Spirit. And it is us. It's within us. It's living in us. We know that. What did, uh, what did Christ redeem us for? Did you ever think of what he redeemed you for? Did he redeem you to just sit around and say, I'm redeemed? Why? <laughs> why, didn't, uh, why didn't he just make you a, an atonement and put it out there and say, there you go, just sit with that? There's no need of giving these deep powers to you. There's no need of, of sacrificing myself for you. There's no need in making this man a son of God. There's no need in doing that. But Jesus didn't do that, see? I would just ask him to believe. I just ask the man to believe, and that'll be good enough. You know better than that. Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? You can believe and still not recognize who you are. People believe in many things. They believe in the Baptist church. They believe in the Methodist church. They believe in cars. They believe in jobs. They believe in careers. You can believe and not have received the Holy Spirit. Paul asked him in Acts 19, which I'm studying Acts very thoroughly right now. He said, um, it was men who were under John the Baptist. Now think of this. And he ran into them in the upper coast of Ephesus and said to them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? They were followers of John the Baptist. And you know what they said? We not heard that there be such a thing as the Holy Spirit. And John was preaching when the Holy Spirit comes. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He'll do all. They said, we not even heard of such a thing. You can sit right in a message and sit there every day of your life and never hear it. And so we see this. Now, but Brother Branham says, listen. What if he said there's no need of giving him this? I'll just ask him to believe it and write his name in a book of heaven, and that'll settle it. But he gave us these redeemed blessings that we might operate the work of God by the energy, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the energy in all of this work. It's producing everything. It's bringing forth everything. And you are the branches. What are you going to produce? What are you going to bring forth? What are you going to present? That's the question. In St. John 15, he said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Do you know that the vine can't bear fruit? The Holy Spirit can't bear fruit. So by all oh, the nine fruits of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't bear those. They say, oh, the five uh, gifts of the, of the church, the, of, the Holy Spirit doesn't bear those. He can't bear any of that. Brother Branham told us very well. He said, the Holy Spirit can't bear that fruit. See, although the fruit is in the vine, but the vine cannot be brought forth from a vine. I'm sorry, the fruit cannot be brought forth from a vine. Go out and look. Look at the grapes. Look at everything. The vine is producing nothing. Did you know that? He says, now, look. It has to have the branch to bear the fruit. The Holy Spirit has to have human beings to bear its fruit, to bring forth what it wants to bring forth. And you and I are the human beings. And we have a channel within us that the Holy Spirit is using. And that channel is moving through us and we become the Holy Spirit. We become all these things. Look. You are the branches. Now the vine, with all of its energy, with all of its energy, cannot produce anything unless the branch is willing to receive the energy. There's an issue right there. We have all of these promises. My God, look at the promises we now have. Look at how the Bible came to life for us. It changed and made a whole new day for us. Brother Branham said in so many scriptures, the Bible has become a brand new Bible since I went to the mountain yonder in, in Sunset Mountain. He said, it's a brand new book to me. Every time I read it, it's new, it's different. What, what was made new to him? He began to produce the energy from another age in his body and it woke him up to where Every scripture that he would read meant something different than it did a few, a couple of years before. It meant something deeper. It meant something different. It took him further 
the energy, when it enters you, it will take you further every time. It will take you, and I really feel that we're in the middle of going further in something right now. I've been every day, I've been praying about it and saying, Holy Spirit, you're within me. Just let it flow. Let it come out. Take us into something. Take us into something that's going to move us even greater. That's going to make us more of a movement of the Spirit. It's not that we don't already have it, but I want more. I want to see more. I want to walk with more. I want to be more. I want all of those things all the time. It's my desire to be godly. It's my desire for people to look at me and say, there's a man that I can follow. That's what I want. You know, somebody said, oh, you're not supposed to follow man. Well, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, take heed to what I say and the spirit will give you understanding. You want understanding? Listen to what I'm saying. It'll give you understanding. Now, see, the branch has to be willing to receive the energy. That's you and me. That's why I've been talking so much about energy Highs and low frequencies, highs and low vibrations. Did you know that the highest and the lowest vibration are so identical that you can get into the very highest frequency and the highest vibration that there is and it'll begin to shatter windows, break glasses, everything else. It'll begin to move water in every direction. Or you can go down to the very lowest, lowest, lowest vibration and frequency and it's got such a shaking boom to it that it'll do the same thing. It'll, it'll cause, they use, they use those low frequencies nowadays to collapse buildings. They do all kinds of things to, to using the high frequencies and the low frequencies that they know of now. I told you some years ago, I said, uh, we have a piano that has 88 keys on it. And it goes from the low frequency to the high frequency on those keys. And this piano, as it has those keys on there, science is now finding out that there's higher frequencies in music than what's on a piano. They're finding out that there's lower frequencies in music than what's on a piano. And they're finding out if you play those frequencies in their highest forms and you get out to like, not key 88, but key 90, 95, 100, 105, 120, which we don't even know how to use yet in musicians and things. Science is finding that it creates images, images of blue and purple and green, and it forms images right in front of you while it's playing. And whatever you play, it'll form that image. You see what I'm saying? We are, we are, we come through the 88 keys. I, I love the sound of the 88 keys. I love the sound of the black keys and the white keys. But I want to hear 105, 110, 120. I want, to, I want to be able to go out into those frequencies and begin to create images. Images of God, Im images of the Spirit. Create things and bring things to pass. And us be able to bring to pass in this earth the millennium that we're supposed to have. To bring into this earth the future home that the prophet said we'd have. You say, well, Brother Parnell, don't we already have it? Yes, we do. But listen to me, there's one more change. There's one more change. And maybe when we get to that change, there's one more change. And maybe when we get to that one, there's one more. But at some point, this earth is going to be, quote, perfect. This earth is going to be everything that we wanted it to be. And humanity is going to live in peace. And we're going to have a great place. It's happening all around us. And we are moving on. We move through the seven church ages, the 88 keys. It's time to move on. So we see this going on. Now he says, now God is depending on you as a member of his body to bear fruit that has not been seen. It's what, it's what we're, we're coming to that. We're in that right now. We're bearing fruit that has not been seen. We're... Paul went into the third heaven and came back and he said, I saw things there and I heard things there that were unlawful, that, that, were, that, were, that should not be spoken among man. Well, what do you think? Where do you think Paul went? If he wasn't in the Old Testament, he wasn't in the Second Testament, he wasn't in any of those places. 
Where did Brother Renham go when he went out to the sixth dimension? Where do you think he went? Where do you think he's seen all those millions of people? He came over here after the opening of the seals. And he looked 20 years out, 30 years out. And he entered into a place where we were all living together. There was the Old Testament saints, the New Testament saints. There was the present saints and there was the future saints. And we were all there together. Brother Branham said in the, in the, in the first seal, he said, he said, I saw Moses there in the breach. I saw Moses there. I saw Elijah there. I saw the sages and the prophets there. I saw you, the, all of us were there together. And he was talking about Sunset Mountain. <laughs> don't, don't get afraid that you're not going to be there. Don't get afraid that you don't have a blank check. Don't get afraid that Jesus hasn't signed the check for you. Don't get afraid of those anything, those things. We're in the resurrection. We're in it and we have every promise of the resurrection walking in us. Now God is depending on you as a member of his body to bear fruit of his spirit that's not been seen. And now if he's depending on you, let's open up our channels. Let's open up our frequencies. Let's open up our hearts. Let's open up our vibrations and say, Lord, I heard all of these things and I love them and I want more. I want to move further. I want to do things. I want to see more. I want to help people more. I remember John Bunyan and Pilgrim's Progress. He said, you haven't lived today until you've helped someone else. Well, I really believe that. We have an energy about us that we can cast out devils, we can heal the sick, we can raise the dead, we can speak with new tongues, we can do all of these things. It's the energy of the Holy Spirit. It is the energy of us coming together, coming together in oneness of understanding, but even further than that, coming together in the unity of being able to live in every facet, in every connection, and look at the entire earth as a complete unity of who we are. And now, if he's depending on you, let's open up our channels and let the Holy Spirit come in tonight and energize you. I, I love the way he just keeps talking about this energy. And energize you. Let the Holy Spirit come in and free us from all those fears and doubts and doctrines and superstitions. How do we get free? Let the Holy Spirit energize you and free you from all of those doubts and fears and doctrines and all of those things. I know many men, they, they, they love to preach doctrine. And I know there's scripture that says, you know, reprove with doctrine. But I read in the sixth chapter of Hebrews where Paul said, if you want to move into perfection, then lay aside the principles of Christ and the doctrines and all those things and let's move on into perfection. Why? Because when you're going about carrying on about all those things, trying to convert somebody or trying to bring somebody to an understanding, they've already got an opinion. They've already got an idea of doctrines. They've already got an idea of superstitions. They've already got an idea of what they want to be. And if you're going to try and use doctrines and superstitions and principles and everything else to convert them, you're not going to get far, I'm telling you. What you need to do is step into that love and that unity and find a connection with those people. And when you find that connection with those people, then it opens up their channels it breaks down all the walls. It does there. It's like a password. You know, I walk up to a man and, and, uh, and I'm trying to get inside his mind and I'm punching in passwords <laughs> and nothing's opening and nothing's opening, you know, and then the Holy Spirit says, go here. And you punch that password in and all of a sudden the whole computer opens up and you can go anywhere you want. That's the way people are. You have to keep working with them and putting in passwords and putting in you know, love and putting in patience and putting in long suffering and meekness and kindness and goodness and faith. And you keep working with them. And one day you'll hit the right password and, and you'll break in there and they will begin to change and they will look at you 
as a great person who brought the change in their lives. And we need one another. Don't think you can do this all by yourself. You need good ground. You need water. You need sunshine. And then you need nourishment, taken care of, understanding, fellowship. You need all those things from all those people and everything around you. That's what I'm talking about. That's what a resurrection is. A resurrection is the greatest thing that can happen to us. And we came into the resurrection at the breaking of those seals out of a partial or out of a potential scene into the real scene. Brother Branham told us in the rising of the sun, he said, we are not potentially resurrected anymore. We are resurrected. All that potential went away with the church ages. We're the real thing now. <laughs> and they couldn't step into that presence, but we can. And we can bring them into that presence with us. I want to pray with you for just a minute. Lord Jesus, we come to you. You're, you're the one inside me. You are me. I'm not looking out there on a cloud and trying to talk to you. You're right here. You're in me. Open me up. Open my flow, my Holy Spirit, my openness, my channels. Break them open. Open them up. Find the passwords. Keep doing it. Take us further and further and further. And let each one of these people that's listening today do the same thing. Surrender. Open up. Let your channels be filled with that Holy Spirit that's already in you. Let it happen to us. This is a great year. This is a great understanding. We see great things happening all around us. I'll talk some more of that next Tuesday. And I will trust as we break further and further into this that we go further and further and break open some things and some understanding that we are the resurrection. That really every one of us, if we could look at our life right, we can go back from the time we entered that womb until now and we can see a death burial and resurrection and a full word and the Holy Ghost living within us and we've laid down our tutors and governors and we've become the father we've become the business we thank you for that Lord and we pray that you would move in our hearts move in our flesh the energy of the vine can do nothing if it can't get into the branches in the branches is you and me. Lord, right here, inside me, move. And let each one of us say the same thing. Love bless you until next Tuesday.